want to thank you all for coming out this weekend. It's been a great time. All right, I've heard there was a rumor that there's over 7,000 people here this About weekend. About 4,000 of us this weekend getting along, having a good time, dancing to music. It's a good thing. Oh, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. You guys are beautiful, all of you. I got to see the Grateful Dead in 1989 in Alpine Valley. I was amazed by the uh, energy of the music. At that point, a number of us had been playing in top 40 bands and heavy metal bands, and uh, it was opening us up to different forms of music. And it was real improvisational. It's just just messing around in different keys and uh, playing with different grooves. Really enjoying the music. And, and the vibe and the energy of the whole thing, the whole collective consciousness of the music combined with the, uh, with the environment. And then uh, it's more than just what you see and hear during the show, it's what you feel. Which I think it's a positive force in everyone's life once they experience it. It's like everyone feels a little bit different after they've been hit with that wave of musical energy. But when we were seeing those early Grateful Dead shows and learning about the music, we, we could see how the music could evoke a certain energy in the crowd to this, it was like this musical catharsis that, that we thought is amazing. And, uh, and, and if we studied it and tried hard enough, maybe we could not only recreate it, but perpetuate it. And at the time I was going to college studying jazz which made it easier to uh, transcribe them with Grateful Dead tunes and understand how they work. Hi, I'm Brian McClellan again. We're here interviewing The Kind. This features Jimmy Tebow on bass. Uh, you're a Jefferson College student here. You're, in, you're involved with the music program here at Jefferson College. Uh, do you feel that it has helped you hone your skills, and would you recommend it to other people that might be coming to Jefferson College? Yeah, I've been playing uh, in the jazz bands out here for like, this is my second semester, and just the past month, I, I just, by the month, I can feel myself getting better. And if anybody's a musician and wants to learn, this, this is a very good place to learn. There's some really good teachers that care, and uh, yeah, I would, definitely. Uh, in the early days, in the early 90s, we were originally called The Kind, and not The Schwag. And we played as The Kind for uh, probably almost a year. Uh, most of the play on Tuesdays in St. Louis, and uh, we were playing those the swag on Mondays. But after a while, we realized we had the kind and the swag at the same time, and if anyone's the kind, it's the grateful that. So we, we must be the swag. Now, uh, Tracy, well, you're an alumni from Jefferson College. Okay, and uh, what would you say the plans of your group is for the future? Well, <clears throat> we're not really a group. We're just kind of like a jam unit. And we just play uh, this kind of music just to maybe educate a couple people and get you know some of the closed minds to check out different kind of music. So you know, we'll just play around and have a good time. All right, well, good luck with whatever you guys do. Now the jam unit, the kind. There's more for them.
top 40 bands and heavy metal bands, we were we were performing to the crowd that just happened to show up at the nightclub that night that was just looking for a band. They didn't care what band. But when we started doing the swag group, we noticed that a lot of the same people were coming back. Where we were recognizing people, it's like, hey, you were here last Tuesday. It's like, yeah, I enjoyed the show so much last week. I come back to see what you guys were going to come up with this week. So it challenged us as musicians to come up with uh, different songs to perform for these people and to do different things with the songs that you know they may have seen us play before. We always kind of had our own little twist on the dead stuff, and it seemed like no matter who was in the band, we always had our own flavor. Even if we tried really hard to sound exactly like a certain recording of the dead, it would still come out schwagmatized. And uh, after so many years, I gave up trying to sound like the dead, and it's just like, well, let's just do it the way we do it. We're the swag, take it or leave it. You know, we're not recreationists, we're perpetuationists. We just do our own twist on the music. We approach the tunes as though they're jazz charts. We, we just take the basic outline of the song, what key it's in, what the tempo is, what the lyrics are, what the melody is, and we do our own thing with it. So uh, the one time I met him at a book signing, I let him know what we do. I only had two minutes to talk to him. And I was like, hey, we just take the songs and rock them out. We don't even try sounding like you guys. I hope you're not offended. He's like, no, that's the way it's supposed to be played. That's all we ever did. You know, it's great that you're continuing on that vibe instead of recreating stuff. So I felt we got Phil Lesh's blessing, even though he probably doesn't remember talking to me or anything. But um, I was glad to hear him say that. He, he signed her. We bought his book, Searching for the Sound, and he autographed it. You know, good luck. <laughs> You're just E minor, yeah. and I'm climbing bass line up to G. That's why you probably thought it was weird. So it's just E minor, and I climb up to G. C. So, set your time. G. Split this B flat, B flat. Split F second time. C. Now we and go to G. G. And the last hit on a G is a, is a G with a fourth suspension. Can we get that E minor? As, as time grew on, a uh, number of musicians would come and go throughout the band. People that have went on to bigger groups, people that 
have retired from the music business. Some nights there'd be four people in the band, some nights there'd be 12 or 13 of us. Um, making noise, there'd be a lot of percussionists, sometimes two bass players, and I would play lead bass, the other guy would play rhythm bass on his six string. Uh, there was a couple times I was just the lead singer, I'd just stand there with a the microphone and sing. And uh, when Jerry died in 1995, that was a big freak out. That's, that's when we thought, man, that's, that was, that's the only group that can really capture that energy. We were uh, playing a house gig in the Soulard area of St. Louis at this little small club called Molly's. Every Tuesday we night. about 80 people. I know some of you were there because I recognize some of you from way back then. And back then we were three piece, three guys in the band. Partly because the club was so small, we could barely fit the three of us up there anyway. And some of them early Tuesdays, there was more people in the band than the audience. It was kind of funny. We had some good nights there. We started playing a lot of Grateful Dead songs. We were having a good time. And some of the other clubs in town started hiring us. We played at the Blue Note, and that was a lot of fun. So we had to keep going back there. Then we went down to Carbondale, Illinois, and we had fun with them folks. Then we started going to state to state, like all the way to Bloomington, Indiana, up to Iowa City, Iowa. And before too long, we were covering 16 states in the Midwest, doing about 200 shows a year. <laughs> it's like, how did that happen? Shakedown Street in Rockarusa Way, uh, right there by the general store. And it seems like all the people in this camping area and this camping area are funneling past here to go to the main stages, and that's why we're getting this flow. I think it's a it's positioning is, is the key element of, of this, as well as timing. If it was four in the morning, we wouldn't be getting this good of a crowd. I can't tell if. Uh, the street team is affected, you know. Here you go, bud. Here you go. We have given out two or three thousand of them, and we do have about five or six people walking around with them. 
Here you go. You must have one. You must have one. Here you go, bud. The goal is to hand them all out, all these people, because uh, potentially they would uh, enjoy going to Schweigstein as well. So the theory goes. This is definitely our demographic. Right you know, it's like hitting the pavement, pounding the pavement, shameless self-promotion um, at its best. You, know, you don't get any better than this. Although there are some guys out there that work at Jackhammer eight hours a day in this heat. So this this might be a, a few steps up from that anyway. Not that not that working at Jackhammer is a bad job. I've actually done that before. But uh, with with this environment there tends to be uh, a few more hotter chicks walking around. Yeah. Can I have one? Let's see what I mean. Have you seen this town play through? Nothing here that can interest you. Well, 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 you can never tell. It's not because you missed out on the things that you had to start. Maybe you had too much too fast. 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 Maybe you had just so I played your part Shaking on Shakedown Street Used to be the heart of town Tell me this town ain't got no Just gotta poke around Definitely a dance band. It seems like no matter what type of audience we play to, we can get them dancing. And that's a cool thing to get people dancing that usually don't dance. And the way we do it also is, uh, or the way it ends up being really, is people that dance to the music, they don't pair up with each other like, like a lot of usual groups. They dance directly with the music. They'll all be facing the band. There might be a friend standing next to them. But they weren't really so much, uh, they're, they're dancing with the music. Uh, some people call it the snake dance. And um, you just let, let the music flow through your body. And uh, that's what people do at the swag stocks. Whether you're two years old and you're just shaking it, or you're, you're 70 years old and you're just getting it any way you can with the music. And to get you know, 300 people dancing or 7,000 people up on their feet rocking out is a real, a rewarding experience for the musicians because you know you're, you're doing the job that, that you were there to do is to please people, make them happy and improve their life because music is not a need. People need a place to live, they need food, they need a job. They don't need music, they, they want music and there's, there's a lot of choices out there for them to go to and some people come to our shows and dance for the first time. It might take them this till the second set to do it but when they come back they're up there on the first note of the first set the next time. They're like, I've been through this drill, I know what's going down, let's just not waste any time and get it.
gonna shake down the street It used to be the heart of town Tell me this town ain't got no heart Just gotta poke around Shaking on shakedown Shaking on shakedown Shaking on shakedown Used to be the heart of town Used to be the heart of town Used to be the heart of town Tell me this town ain't got no heart So if there's this tune that Dylan does at the time he was on the Dylan of the Dead record called Slow Train and I've always thought it was about Dylan and in a way of the dead also looking at all of their cronies from the late 60s from the counterculture and kind of saying, you know, where are they now? And it kind of speaks to all the people falling off this, this thing. And there's a slow train coming for all of them. And in a weird way, I, it, this has been, I mean, look around. We can do a quick pan. This is just set on a Tuesday night. Walk, you know, in a public parking lot. Uh, obviously, there's like something that is still around. The scene was big enough, it was modern enough. Most people here never saw Jerry play. Our drummer and our guitarist have never seen Jerry play. I've seen Jerry, or Jimmy and I probably saw the day. You know, I was like 70 or something. He was like 90 or 100, maybe. But it used to trip us out back in the day. I said that kind of casually, but when, when we would say, oh, somebody's never seen the dead, it would be almost a, a thing, a cut and dry thing. Like you haven't jumped in. Now that it's not possible, it's kind of like, let's take all covers. And so there is kind of something to that. There is an unfolding that has been happening, that is happening. Manifested by this idea of a true second generation, a true other generation. We have no direct connection to Garcia that we got. All right, so everyone having a good time so far tonight. Then around 1997, we had this really great idea of getting all our friends together for a camp out out in the woods. That's right. We called it Schwagstock. Uh, we played a few camp out events before that first Schwagstock. One of the very first camp out events we did wasn't called the Schwagstock. We were playing at the Old Threshers Festival in Paris, Missouri. And uh, the police got a little upset and they were hassling people. So after we played on the ball field and the fairgrounds and set everyone camping there getting hassled, my parents invited everyone to their 20 acres right outside of town, three miles away. So there's this big caravan of 300 people and we all camped in the backyard. It was a lot of fun. And we thought, wow, this is great. We should do this again. And that led to that first Schwagstock event, which was, I guess, a month or so later. So we moved to Lusterville, Missouri, and we had a really big party down there back in 1998. Then in 1999, on Labor Day, we had over 2,000 people show up for a party down there. And we thought, man, we're on to something here. We need to keep this going because it's a really good time. Everyone's having a good time. There's no problems. It's really cool. Then we outgrew that place in Lusterville and we moved all the way to Leesburg, Missouri. There at Bagnell Tam, too, you know, down Lake Lozarks. We're having four big parties a year, playing gigs all over. And then one time in Leesburg, about three years ago, over 7,000 people showed up for one of our parties. And we're like, holy cow, what are we gonna do now? So you know what we went and did. We went and bought our own property in Salem, Missouri, and now we have parties all the time.
first saw the dead in 1989, uh, Alpine Valley, Wisconsin, uh, went up there for three shows. And by the second song of the first set of the first night, I was blown away with the energy, the amount of people that were there and how they were vibing off the energy. And it was that vibe. And in 1989 at Alpine Valley, they let everyone that wanted to camp right on the parking lot. And uh, I thought it was an amazing community vibe. And uh, it seemed like wherever I went in the country to see the dead, there was always that little zoo or that family traveling with the band. And uh, then when the dead stopped touring, it's like a lot of these people, they didn't have that coming to their city and they couldn't travel to it. And that's what I always enjoyed about the dead show was the fact that you could camp right there and you could hang out with all these people. Because most concerts, the second the show's done, they flip the lights on and security's poking you to saying, thank you for the money, get out. You know, where at the dead shows, it's like, hey, the show's over, hang out. Uh, the last couple years of the dead shows weren't quite like that. They were having so many people hang out in the lots that it was too much of a problem for the venues to handle, so they weren't allowing camping. And those last dead shows, it was making me sad that the show's over, lights come on, you get poked and ran off the lot. Like, and it was some pretty bad scenes trying to run people off the lot where for years they were allowed to. And then Jerry died and the, and the whole thing was, seems like it was crashing. And sure, they did the Further Fest the next year and that, but it was the same thing, you couldn't camp. And it's like no one that was in charge of anything was, was realizing the importance of that parking lot scene in that community. And it wasn't rocket science what I did. I was just like, hey, why can't we create a vibe where we move the band out to the middle of the parking lot and just surround the, the, the stage with all this, um, with, with all these people. Found a check. My name is Heather. Oh, it's so nice to see all of you out there on the grass. Everybody else, come down to you. Have a nice seat on the grass and relax. We got open mic here on the second stage. So happy to be here at Schwagstock 25. Yeah. So uh, we got a bunch of people that are already signed up on the list, but I do still have a few spots available. So anybody out there who would like to get up here on the stage for the open mic today, please do come down here and hang out. Uh, DJ Reason E will start at 2 o'clock, 3.30 will be the High Time Cousin, 4.30 will be the Green Mountain Grass, 6.30 will be the Almond Brothers Tribute, Morgan Town, which uh, should be an excellent show, and then we'll try to listen to the stage at 9 o'clock once again tomorrow on the main stage at uh, the Come check it out. Hi, I'm Mark Warning with Cosmic Cornucopia. We've been vending since Schwagstock 3. We've only missed one. Been to lots of other events. Schwag is just fantastic. It's, it's my idea of heaven. I must have had a good previous life to be reincarnated to come to this. I could have been reincarnated as a turkey vulture eating mammal patties off the side of the road, but this is, this is my privilege and I love it. It uh, gives a lot of people the opportunity to enjoy themselves and they find love, they find kindness, they learn to give and share, um, they learn that, that um, they can trust. It's a whole different experience for a lot of kids that were brought up, maybe if they had trouble at home or, or any kind of uh, a situation that has maybe marked them, that a past that's, that's very hurtful. And they learn to come here and share. It's not only kids, but the adults, they open up. They learn to share their feelings, and they're kind. 
always, but they were not treated that way. A lot of them come in, don't have maybe a lot of money or something like that. They can come in and they need something to drink or anything. They cannot believe that you just give them something. They learn so much about love and they learn a lot about life. It, it's always a really positive experience for most of them. Beer of the daytime should be considered smoothies. See, pleasant barter with the authorities. It's great. Nobody's excitable, nobody's fighting. For some reason, occasionally when cops come by, I'll go like this. Like you're gonna it's less suspicious if you have good posture. <laughs> See people with a car like cops and everybody's like, oh. First, the first one I met was uh, this guy over here. So I met him. We were at this gas station store, and he we wanted to buy these tickets to the Great Dead concert. He wanted one, and I wanted one, so I didn't know sign language at the time. So we went. I told him, well, you take one ticket, and I'll take one ticket, and we'll meet here tomorrow, and a bunch of my friends are going. And so we went out there and we stayed for a week and I was kind of fascinated with his ability to communicate and how much he enjoyed the show. I started becoming an interpreter and since I already know all the dead music, it's easy to interpret. I just do it and I'll voice what he has to say. I've been coming here many, uh, many schwag stocks, really too many to count. It's like well, kind of like the Grateful Dead farm. farm. It feels like home here, but it is different. It's like being in a different world. I wish that people live like this all year round. Well, we are the pyrotechnicians for the swag stock. Uh, we're chaining up some shells, getting ready to blow some stuff up. Gonna have a little fun Saturday night after the show. This grand crescendo builds and grows. Grand finale. Yeah, the yeah, the, the fireworks will, will start. Kind of like to think of a kind of like a Tibetan sand painting, you know. It's kind of the art. It blows away as as we enjoy it. Thank you, Monsieur. Just a lot of good times. A lot of friends. Everyone comes out. Everyone's cool. We work at other festivals where it's security is so strong and you know everyone's so uptight and everything that you can't even enjoy yourself and that's one of the beautiful things about swag sock is that people just come here and you know have fun and just they have a little bit of brotherly love spreading around and everyone has a little bit of respect for each other and it's a little bit of a free I like to think of it like a little free zone you know it's just great that something like that still goes on in America because sometimes you think it's just you know this this can't exist anymore but it can't, it's just got to stay hidden away. It's not quite ready for mass consumption yet. Swag stock, it's just like everyone's on the same page and everyone's having fun. I just, uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's sitting around the campfires, just drinking, yeah. chilling. One of the things is like, you start doing so many swag stocks, you get to know the, because the same people are involved over the years it kind of becomes like your own little neighborhood. It's like you're coming home, you're like, ah, swag stock again, here we go. Run, take a little stroll around, run into this guy, run into that guy, have a good laugh, some memories. The crowd comes out, man, they, they totally dig it. Even though everyone's heard it before and everything, it still is magical every time they play. And you know, when the swags at swag stock, you know, they came to kick some ass, man. They came to party. When we started, there were like 1,500 people, and they traveled around different campgrounds, and and they, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was only the family that came. It was the same the same people, and you know they they bought their campground in one of the most beautiful places ever. And you know I've noticed that uh, more people that aren't familiar with the family and familiar with the music have been coming, you know, and I just hope that those people can appreciate it and be cool and respect the free zone that they're given, the latitude they're given, because sometimes I worry 
when I see people that you know don't know anything about this, they just hear it's an incredible party, and that you know that uh, yeah, free for all. Yeah, that it's a free for all. You know, but to do that, you know, humanity has to have respect for each other. You know, you can't just you can't once bad you know bad elements see one person's respect as another person's weakness. You know, I just hope that it never becomes. You know, I just hope everyone can dig the vibe. You know that as the, the, I hope the swag can be popular, and not, and not, you know, open a Pandora's box at the same time, because it's hard to cast pearl in front of swine, and you know, the public may the public is, may not always be ready for for this much love and peace and freedom. Find shit that's unique, you know, make it part of yours. It's swag, man. Like, got this fucking. Ooh, skeleton thing that I smoke cigarettes out of, shit. I think Shakedown Street, the vending area, is very important. It broke my heart at the later shows where they were busting people for vending. They would take all their tie-dyes and all their food and people would be crying and people walked around the lot were looking for that and that's where a lot of people would centralize themselves it's like the main street of a grateful dead show or the main street of a swag stop is shakedown street and I, I think it's right up there with the uh with the music you know we book the vendors like they're the artist and some of them are artists some of them are blowing glass and making sculptures or they're, they're spray painting so you can get something to wear you can get something to eat there you can buy something you want or something you need or you can just browse even if you don't have money and then buy it the next time around but i think it's very uh essential to the event it's, it's the, one of the main ingredients that make uh, swag stock what it is or a dead parking lot scene the way it was So we wanted to keep that vibe. So after a while, we started regulating the vendors. There was a few shows where some of these state fair vendors were coming up to me between bands going, hey man, can you shut the music down? It's killing our business. I'm like, you're here for the wrong reason, and I'm sorry I have to say that. Sunshine day Excellent. We're going to take a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Cheers to Schwagstock, everybody. Let's all do a social. Everybody drink. Everybody drink.
beauty of some of those songs is the way they're structured is when you're playing them you can get real free with the music. It's like you kind of set up the intro and the intro can be short and you bust right into the first verse or you can stretch it out and play with it for a while and then do the first verse. And then the journey between the first verse and the second verse is different from night to night. While the fire lights a glow, strange shadows of a flame will grow to things we've never seen. I think the audience kind of comes going, okay, how are they going to play it tonight and what kind of adventure are they taking us on? Shadows of the sailor form and winds both bow and farewell swore. Down in Carlisle, he loved the lake many years ago. Like, oh, we're going to ride that spaceship tonight. What galaxy are we going to explore on this ship? Beside him stands a man. From the looks of him Who came through many fires And then you, you come back and then you get on another ship Which could be Terrapin Station Which takes you to a whole other land Which the lyrics paint this picture While the storyteller speaks The door within the fire breaks Suddenly flies over And a girl the stand takes the listeners on these journeys, as well as the musicians. Eyes alive with growing hair, all the fancy paints is full. She takes her fan and throws it in the lion's den. the highest one on the field almost, you know, except obviously for people up on the hill. But, I mean, I have the definite uh, bird's eye view. Uh, but one thing about it is, is that all the stage lighting being directed in our faces, I can't really a lot of times see out more than the first three rows. It's pretty much just black. It's just an expanse of black. But what's cool about it is I will see like the fire torch guys way up on the back of the field you know I'll see the torches I'll see anything lit up I'll see the the guy who has the balloon or whatever with, with a neon floating way up in the back and uh, the the fire the campfire in the back always the moon it seems like we always get like just the most killer shots of the moon I do especially man from where I'm sitting you know because the moon is right over the hill always for us and uh, or uh, yeah, it's just pretty crazy. I'd like you to think about what happiness means to you. Here are the answers I heard today. Happiness is love. Happiness is friends. Happiness is breathing. Feeling. Relaxing. Content. No worries. A full belly. Good family. Swag's 
everybody's face. Being here, not caring what other people think of you. Being free, doing whatever you want. Enjoy being around people. Well, I want to take you on a little trip. is all about as far as people, kind of deadheads or swaggers. It's uh, deadheads and swaggers are really the same people, man. You know, I mean, it's like we're playing for the same crowds, we're playing the same music for the same crowds. But it's like the only difference is, is you know, we do the dead like uh, rocket fuel, man. You know, I mean, we just take it up to a different place, you know, sort of. But it's, we're, we're doing the same music with for the same people. I think the reason that the Grateful Dead music has been perpetuated in the whole thing, say, with the swag and swag music, or anybody else, that Tricksters or Dark Star, anybody else out there doing it, is that it's a, it's a communal family vibe that's just always been there since, I guess, the earliest part of the 70s, I guess, or the late 60s. People kind of latch on to that, man. It's, you know, I always kind of think that the deadheads or, or, or the swaggers are kind of a convention for the unconventional. such a family vibe and I think that, that I've certainly picked up on it since I've been
Sometimes we start one song off, kind of groove into another tune, then into another turn, then, then back into the original song we were in.
to the songs mean a lot. And, and the way these songs are written to where when you sing the songs, the audience gets to hear every single word and nuance of every word, where some groups, when you hear the, the singer sing, you can barely understand any of the words they're, they're singing. With the dead material, the lyrics are right there, and, and, and the audience sings along. It amazes me how many people in the audience know the words. Sometimes I'm forgetting the lyric, and I just get quiet for a minute and listen for the audience to sing. So they know the songs as well. And why it's that way with this group of songs, compositions, I don't know, it just is. So. Um, I don't know if anyone of us can explain it, but we all just go with it because the music's magic in itself. There's been times we were playing like a ballad, a power ballad in the middle of a big show, 6,000 people, 7,000 people, and the whole entire audience will be so quiet. Like on Stella Blue, we'll hit a pocket of silence and everyone will just hold their breath because they know that silent part's coming and they concentrate. And then uh, we come back in and everyone screams and it's, it's this, this bolt of energy where you think most energies come from playing loud and hitting a big thing, and we, we do those too, but to be able to do it with quietness. What's an F? I got one. Uh, okay. I just gotta go to here. Yeah, we'll check it out my front porch for a couple days. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's start over. See, <laughs> this is very informal. Fare you well, my honey. Fare you well, my holy true one. All the birds that were sick. through life, it's hard to find a group of people that you can get along with uh, in a real uh, tangible way. I mean, everybody likes each other. I mean, nobody's out to have a bad day, and that's hard to find. A lot of people out there with a lot of bad attitudes. Bad, bad day 
you can get the great potential to can always make things uplifting where you feel good and move on. with my son um, got in trouble when he was 13 and we had to do family therapy court ordered and they said look I got something to tell you here uh, the thing that I think is most important with adolescent children you got to know them and they got to know you and that means you must do things they want to do so you know uh, in his room all the time I hear this Grateful Dead music and I think well you know I know the dead but it wasn't really my favorite music but I thought, okay, I gotta do things that he wants to do. And then Maddie Shannon said, Mary, you gotta hear this band. They're called the Schwag, and they're a dead cover band, and they're awesome. And uh, they oftentimes do all ages. So we took Ben and his friends. Not only did we take Ben, but all of his friends. We had a Volkswagen van, we packed everybody up. We got to know Ben, and he was developing just beautifully. His last Schwag stock was in um, September of 99. And October 16th, he died in a car accident. I am bonded with the band, the Schwag. I love the Schwag, not only because I love the music, but because they gave to me this opportunity to know my son. You know, it, 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 we do just fine. I mean, you know, I'd love to see Ben again, but I can't ever. We can't ever. And, uh, but it all seems okay if we could say goodbye. And we also have continued to do the swag and bring him back with the spirit tribe. And I put these thousands of pictures, hundreds of pictures, no, maybe 50 pictures. <laughs> and, uh, but him and Connor, Connor, his buddy, went to the first swag stock, died four months later in an unrelated accident. And then one of the girls, Erica, who was driving the car that Ben was in, uh, is the, her pictures are there too and her twin sister Melissa so I feel it's just you know I bring them back to every swag stock and I'm never gonna miss a swag if you don't see me in a swag stock something's really wrong with me or Bob but I'd probably let him home with somebody and come myself <laughs> <laughs> because I have to bring the kids back to swag stock well a lot of people have been asking about Jack and Jack, first off, for me anyway, it's definitely a brother, truly kin to me, man. And uh, he decided he wanted to get into doing more of a project where he could write songs and have a vehicle to write. And him and Devin Allman have a band um, going on Honey Tribe. It's really cool. It's really tight. It's been tight with us. It's been tight with the tribe for a long time. And um, I think Jack was kind of really feeling the creative itch to get out there and do that whole thing. Jack really brought a really bluesy edge to us. And, um, he's a real bluesy guy, a real bluesy keyboard guy. Nate brings a real jazz sensibility to the group. We sound really jazzy at times a lot now. One cool thing about playing this music is I never actually got to see The Grateful Dead with Jerry Garcia. Um, after Jerry Garcia died, I got real into the band. I actually met Jimmy around that time, around like 96, 97. Uh, he took me to a couple, a couple further shows and it kind of opened my mind up a little bit to what this was all about. Um, and definitely playing Schwagstock uh, and actually my first swag stock I played was the first swag stock I ever went to, so that kind of just kind of furthered the whole scene for me and, and what it was all about, and just the coolness of the, you know everything, the music, the people, the appreciation of 
the people for the music. Definitely being on stage at, at uh, like a swag stock, um, looking out into the crowd and seeing the people and the, the glow sticks going all over the place and the smiles on people's faces. I almost try to like get out to where they're at and like kind of do like an out of body thing to where like, you know, I'm playing keyboards and stuff, but like I'm also just kind of enjoying the same moment everyone else is, you know, be it me being on stage or like them being out there and enjoying the good time and everything. Grateful Dead music is, is so strong in its compositions that the songs will live on forever. They're almost timeless. Uh, people hear them for the first time and enjoy them. People can hear them year after year after year. And they're continually evolving. There's energy in life to it. And, and I never get burned on the songs. 30 years now, I can see me doing this until I die. And hopefully I'll get 80 or 90 years, maybe 100. I'll just body. And after we're dead, the songs are going to still live on, and there's going to be other people there. i 
Give it up for Tim Moody on guitar tonight. Tony Antonelli on drums. Nate Carpenter on the keyboards. Heather Barth sitting in with us. My name's Jimmy Tebow, and we thank you all. Lay down, my dear brothers. Lay down and take your rest. Won't you lay your head? Upon your Savior's breast I love you Oh, but Jesus loves you the best And we bid you good night Good night Good night Lay down, my dear brothers Lay down and take your rest Won't you lay your head Upon your Savior's breast I love you Oh, but Jesus loves you the best And we bid you good night Good night Good night And we bid you good night Good night Good walking through Jerusalem Just like John Good night Good night I remember right well, I remember right well. Good night, good night. And it's one for the staff and one for the bride. Good night, good night. We've been walking for 15 years now. Good night, good night. And walking through Jerusalem just like Jesus. Good night, good night, good night. Lay down, my dear brothers, lay down and take your rest. Won't you lay your head upon your Savior's breast? I love you, oh, but Jesus loves you the best. And we bid you good night, good night, good night. And we bid you good night, good night, good night. And we bid you good night, good night, good night. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you at Schwagstock this summer. We're still playing every Tuesday in town. Thank you. It's hard to leave a Schwagstock. 
it is. We hate to leave. Well, we now we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good night, everybody.